Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Monday, February the 1st. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House. Glad you could join me for morning devotions. Um, we're continuing to uh, work through the book of James. And we've, we've come to chapter 5. And James immediately uh, comes to a point concerning um, a matter of great importance. And he talks about greed and living life for self in the here and now. So, starting with verse 1 in chapter 5, James says, Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth is rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. So James jumps right into a matter of great importance, and that is greed. Um, greed has taken many people down to the pit of hell. And, um, you know, you've probably heard it said that the root of evil is money. Well, th this isn't entirely correct. But the Bible does tell us in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 9 and 10, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and to many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Greed is bad for a number of reasons, but I think the first and foremost reason that it's bad and I, I'm going to focus energy on this, is that it breaks the first of the Ten Commandments. Um, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, how would money be breaking the first of the Ten Commandments? Well, Matthew chapter 6, 24 um, clarifies this. Jesus confirmed this thought when he said this. He said, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, I've heard this said before that money doesn't have a life. It can't act on its own. It cannot do good deeds. It cannot commit bad deeds or crimes. Basically, it is amoral. It is neither good nor bad. No matter how many Bible verses about money there is, Money can only do what you tell it to do. And herein lies the problem. You see, money money can give you power and the ability to control certain things in your physical life. So, it can lead us directly back to the garden where we see the tempter, Satan, tempting Eve to sin. You see, this, the temptation of Eve was not specifically just about the fruit. Uh, the fruit was pleasing to the eye, but um, the temptation for Adam and Eve was primarily that they could actually become like God. Um, they were tempted to disobey the one true God to try and establish themselves as demigods and gain control over their own destiny and lives. Satan's words, which were designed to get Eve to debate God's command, entertained the possibility that God didn't know what was best and that man might actually be able to do better. Now, considering that statement, I have a couple statistics for you. Did you know that 16 out of 38 of Jesus' parables deal with money and possessions? 
Nearly 25% of Jesus' words in the New Testament deal with biblical stewardship principles. One out of ten verses in the Gospels deal with money. There are more than 2,000 scriptures on tithing in the Bible, money, and possessions, which is twice as many as faith and prayer combined. See, God desires our devotion, and He knows that you are going to come face to face with the temptation of money, which is why He speaks about it so often. See, money is tangible in the here and now. You can hold it in your hand. You can put it in your bank account. It can change your physical circumstances. It can make it so that you can relax and so that your belly is full. You see, it has power to take away your attention from knowing that you actually need God into thinking and fooling you into thinking that you can control your own destiny. Hmm. The bottom line is this. When it comes to money, we will either worship wealth or we will worship with our wealth. Read that again. I'm going to read that again. When it comes to money, we will either worship wealth or we will worship with our wealth. There is a big difference between the two. God doesn't talk about money because he's broke and he needs a helping hand. Far from it. Um, God owns absolutely everything. Since God is the rightful owner over everything in the universe, this means the money that we earn actually belongs to God. Money is a tool, and it can help us live and love like Jesus. It certainly can. We can do much good with money. But the temptation is to uh, to greed. Because of our sin nature, we get tempted to try and gain power rather than use money as a tool to live and love like Christ. You see, we can we we can have possessions or a lack thereof, and it seems as though money might be the solution to making everything better and more comfortable. But when money takes the place of God, we essentially embrace selfishness and use money to gain power for ourselves. And this puts us in the same attitude as Satan, who rebelled against God, for the love of power, coveting what God has. So James writes these verses to those who have fallen in love with their money and who are pursuing money for the sake of power and pleasure at the expense of other people. Lust for wealth is very dangerous. Although wealth can give us temporary satisfaction, you can't Take it with you when you're gone. Everything's going to go to someone else. The truth is that only surrendering to Jesus gives the heart of a person true um, satisfaction and peace. There is peace in knowing that you're trusting in the Prince of Peace. Money fools you into thinking that you can shape your world and destiny without God. Greed becomes like a drug, and once you taste of it, you can crave, very easily crave more. And that's why it's so dangerous. God, other people, and relationships become secondary in importance to money when you fall in love with it. God actually, and others, become commodities that uh, you'd get tempted to try and manipulate to get what you want. If you're in love with money, you will try to manipulate God and others to get what you want. We see this uh, in this bless me, health, wealth, material, prosperity doctrine that's been promoted so much in North America over the past 30 years. Um, Basically, I need to find a way to please God so that 
he'll pour his material blessings on me. Hmm. It's at the same root, I think, as people pursuing wealth and riches through lottery tickets or cheating on tax returns or, as in the case of James here, shorting wages to others who are having a hard time and are suffering because of our greed. Um, it all comes from the same root. It comes from selfishness. Ah, many people have trampled on others to get the treasures of this world. In history, thousands upon thousands of murders have been committed by people deciding that someone else has what they want. Even King Herod, when he, when he found out a new king was born, he tried to get rid of the king because of his love for his own power and his position. So he killed off all the two-year-olds in Bethlehem. This is the kind of thing that um, is at the heart of so much evil in this world. You see, love defined practically as sacrificially giving and serving other people or God selflessly. Greed is all about me and building my own kingdom here on the earth. Greed always leads to separation from God and other people. You know, we've all watched that story about Ebenezer Scrooge at Christmas where Ebenezer is confronted with his own greed and the fallout of his decisions is shown to him like a video camera um, reel. And uh, that is so close to the truth. That's why it appeals to so many people. You see, the love of money leads to hell. And this is why Paul tells Timothy concerning the love of money in 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12. But you, O man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made good your confession in the presence of many witnesses. We can push away from the table of greed and pursue these things, my friends. This is Food for Thought.